Let's return to our top story where the final day of voting in widely discredited referendums in Russian-controlled areas of Ukraine. Now, Ukraine and the West say the result has already been decided by the Kremlin and will be used as an excuse for an illegal land grab. Well, for more on this, we speak now to our RISE chief correspondent, John Cookson. Good day and welcome straight into it. Do we know when the result of the referendum is likely to be announced? Hi there, great to be on uh, Newsday as always. Well, President Putin's due to uh, speak to the uh, Russian parliament on Friday and it's widely expected he'll um, announce the results uh, of these elections in those, in those four provinces. Uh, we know what the result is likely to be, uh, an ov overwhelming yes vote uh, by the people in those provinces to, to join the Russian Federation. The question on the ballot paper was, do you support accession to Russian to Russia as a federal subject and uh, uh, when this was carried out before a similar poll in in Crimea in 2014 the result was 97 percent in favor of course these polls as you said are, are widely discredited and, and, and said by the West uh, as, as a sham uh, and it has to be said that there will be people in in these regions who will vote uh, to become a part of, genuinely vote to become part of Russia because uh, Ukraine uh, in the past uh, was part of uh, uh, the Soviet Union, especially the older people will remember those days with some, some, with, uh, some affection. But the West uh, is never going to uh, accept that uh, these are uh, genuine polls with a genuine result. Uh, we're talking about Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhzhia and uh, Kherson. I'm just getting details um, of the turnout. Uh, if that uh, is relevant here. Uh, Luhansk, 83%, Donetsk, 86%, Zaporizhia, 63%, and Kherson, uh, 65%. So uh, a, a big turnout. But, uh, of course, these figures are for sure being manipulated uh, by, by the Russians to say, look, these are the people voting. They wanted to vote, and they turned out in their thousands in the last five days. So... The result likely to be known by Friday, uh, an announcement by President Putin to the Russian parliament. Well said, John. Of course, uh, we don't expect the West to um, accept what will be the outcome of these elections. But do we expect to see a more um, dramatic reaction, if you will, for what's being called a sham election? I think it's already been said by a, a lot of nations as to what they, they think. Uh, even Serbia, a long-time ally of, of Russia, says that uh, uh, Serbia won't recognize the results of, of the referendum. Uh, the White House uh, said that it will uh, uh, Ukrainian territory will always be Ukrainian territory uh, and the U.S. will never recognize it as anything else. The U.K. today has gone one step further and sanctioned 92 Russian officials. Uh, who were involved in, in, in these uh, referendum. Uh, and the British government put out a statement saying that uh, uh, sham referendums held at the barrel of a gun cannot be free or fair, and we will never recognize the results. So the UK uh, very much making its uh, position uh, clear on that. All right. Now, uh, another one of the issues that analysts are highlighting is that the possibility of uh, nuclear confrontation being more likely after re results are announced. Can you please unpack this for us? Yeah, I'm afraid they're, they're, they are right, uh, uh, because uh, uh, a big yes vote, and we know the, the result will be a big yes vote to join the Russian Federation by these provinces, will give Russia the excuse to annex the, the whole area. And that, and that amounts to about 15% of Ukraine, uh, 4 million people uh, in that territory. Uh, my understanding is that uh, reports from Russia is that uh, uh, ultimately Russia wants to call this the whole of uh, whole region, Crimea, and the Crimean province, thus, thus extending the, the territory that it grabbed illegally in, in 2014. Now, the significance of this being Russian territory uh, unfortunately brings a greater risk of some kind of nuclear attack uh, by tactic, with tactical nuclear weapons uh, by, by Russia uh, to any assault on this newly grabbed territory because under the Russian protocol 
uh, and under its constitution about using nuclear weapons if Russia faces an ex ex existential threat, which clearly uh, uh, fighting and, 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 and rockets fired uh, from Ukraine is an ex ex existential threat to this region, then that gives uh, Putin the excuse and in Russian law the right to new, use tactical nuclear weapons. What is a tactical nuclear weapon? Well, it's a small, very small version of a nuclear bomb attached to, to a rocket, uh, the equivalent of about 78 kilotons of TNT. And the idea about behind these weapons is they don't uh, spread a, a, a nuclear cloud. Afterwards, it's, it's, it's very much restricted to a, a, a region and quite easy to take out a, a specific town with just one of the these weapons so this is a frightening prospect and uh, and uh, uh, the uh, dmitry medvedev uh, the deputy chairman of russia's security council said today that uh, uh, moscow is ready to use uh, nuclear weapons and uh, <coughs> this jibe to nato saying that uh, nato wouldn't want to risk a nuclear war in in other words nato wouldn't respond, so uh, Russia would be free to use these weapons. This is this is all scary stuff, and uh, w this is all going to develop in, in the coming days and weeks after this uh, referendum and the expected annexation of the whole region. Scary is definitely right. Now, just last week, Vladimir Putin announced a partial mobilization. How is that draft going? Well... <laughs> Uh, we've seen mixed results from that. There have been uh, riots uh, in various parts of, of Russia, uh, the call-up of 300,000 men between aged between 18 and, and 65. Uh, many have tried to flee the country. Uh, reports from the Georgian border and also from Kazakhstan uh, say that around 6,000 men are turning up and crossing the border every day to, to, to escape. Uh, uh, and those that have been called up, many thousands of them already, have been reporting uh, to army bases and, and are getting the training, some uh, not with up-to-date uh, weapons. Uh, I've seen reports of them being offered guns that were around during the time of the First World War, uh, rusty weapons to use. And, uh, uh, you, you know, the situation for these reservists is, is pretty grim because in a few days or even past weeks, they're, they could be fighting on the front line in the, in the Donbass region against a, a well-equipped Ukrainian army. While the entire world continues to watch the situation that's Arise News, Chief Correspondent John Cookson, thank you so much for your time. You're still watching yeah. Newsday. Plenty more still ahead. Four million hectares of arable land. Over 200 million people. One nation. Home to Africa's fertilizer company. Dangote Fertilizer. Pure urea fertilizer. With one single minded passion to feed Nigeria, every bag is a potential, an aspiration to turn this green nation into the biggest food basket of Africa. Dangote Fertilizer. In 1894, our first branch opened in Lagos, Nigeria. And we took our place in this new land brimming with possibilities and surprises. Take Kano, for instance, where the city's wealthiest trader made his first deposit. 20 bags of silver arriving on Camelback. Aren't you glad that we offer online banking today? Expanding across the West African subregion and beyond, our early presence made it possible 
for all hardworking Africans to build great things. So is it any wonder that not one, but two first bankers have gone on to become Nigeria's central banker? We are intricately woven into the fabric of society, supporting polo for over 100 years and pushing the limits of athletic performance. Rooted in tradition, but constantly leaning forward into the future. Are you coming? You first, first bank. Welcome back to Newsday. The All Progressives Congress Presidential Campaign Council has postponed the kickoff of its campaigns earlier slated for Wednesday. Director General of the Tinubu Shatima Presidential Campaign Council and Governor of Plateau State Simon Lalong disclosed this in a statement on Tuesday. According to him, the adjustment of the timetable and schedule of activities was done to accommodate growing interests shown by various political tendencies in the party to be part of the campaign council. He noted that a new date for the kickoff would be announced soon. For that story, Arise analyst Kayode Otitoju joins us now to share his perspective. Good to have you again Thank on you. Newsday. Thank you. It's a pleasure. What do you make of this postponement? Are there severe implications or what do you think? You see, PDP had already set the standard. And even after they set the standard, they came back again eh, to adjust and added names of people that were omitted. Now you have about uh, 10 advisors, among them Secundus, among them Charaki. So now they can say they have a complete, you know, uh, council. So, APC is imitating. And instead of announcing and inaugurating, they want to do everything together. Maybe they want to expand the list. You know, so after expansion, then they can do the inauguration. But uh, I know there was pressure from some governors, you know, that were edged out. To me, I don't think any governor is edged out. Because some of the governors that competed with Ashiwaju for presidential uh, primaries have been absorbed. People like uh, Yaya, Yaya of um, Kogi has been made the coordinator of the youth. Akere Dolu of uh, Ondo has been made to coordinate the Southwest. But um, fire me, I haven't seen his name or holding a significant distance. Maybe because uh, by the time he left the stage for Tinumbu, the Tinumbu people, you know, had been disappointed in him. Okay? And so when they are you know, compiling the list. You know, it's just uh, put aside. Instead, Dayo Adeyeye, who is a diehard of Chinumbu, was uh, picked from Ekiti to represent Southwest. Um, you know, so Lalong is already uh, DG, okay? Then um, even Apabio, former governor, has been given position. So there is no uh, governor, sitting governor, or as governor that has not been incorporated. But there is still always room for addition. And uh, you know, it's better to get in well fine-tuned than put in place before you do your uh, inauguration. And after inauguration, the work starts. And I think works really start from tomorrow, because I think the the um, campaign starts on the 28th, mm -hmm. which is tomorrow. Yeah. 
Talking about inclusivity, that seems to be the, the big word today. Uh, critics are still talking about the absence of Vice President Yomi Oshimbanjo from this list. Now, of course, it has been stated that he needs to keep the government operational because the president himself is the chairman of the presidential ca campaign council. Now, with his absence and the absence of other uh, senior Christian representatives, Christian Association, association excuse me, representatives, who've been open about their opposition to the ticket, Yakubu Dogara and Babachi and Lawal and, and, and their forum. Has this campaign council done enough to address the concern by Christians in the hierarchy of the APC that this ticket will indeed represent their interests? Well, for excluding the vice president, we learned that it was the president that said, okay, you know, excuse him so that he could be, you know, handling the handing over and all with him. So, agreed. But even then, let's say the president didn't say they should exclude him. The people, the, the planning committee that nominate and ratify people will be in the council. They wouldn't have put Oshiba Joe or Kayo Defiyemi. Because in, uh, these are people that Tinumbu really brought up to the limelight politically. And Tinumbu showed interest in presidency. And you came up to be competing with him. In Yoruba land, Baba Adebanjo, Tabi. Talk and I said in Yoruba land we respected that. In Yoruba land, when Tinumbu, ah, we still remember Salami Gate now. And the cock, oh, okay, you are still young then. <laughs> <laughs> I still read history. I'm old enough to read. <laughs> okay. Uh, Fayemi would have become governor, but Justice Salami assisted. Are we true, saying they true, hold no electoral value? True, true, uh, Chinumbu. And by so doing, he got his seat back. I mean, fire me. So mm -hmm. with that alone in Yoruba land, he was not supposed to compete. So, so, yeah. the, the, so, sorry. so I'm still on point. Okay. So with that, we are not having Oshibagyu because Oshibaju was nominated, so to say, by Tinobu to become vice president. Kayode Fayemi competed until when he knew he won't get up to two votes and now said, I step down for my brother. You don't do that. So the body language, Tinobu may be pragmatic and be, you know, to accept that, but the people around Tinobu will not allow. It's like, a monkey that left the bush and do, get domesticated. So after some time, he wants to go back to the bush. And that monkey will chase <laughs> because it's already polluted. So that's it. A part of those who were excluded from, you know, um, be, besides the vice president were also, you know, Chukwemeka and Wajuba, the former minister of state for education, Babache Lawa as well. So. There are suggestions that this postponement is actually a you know, classic case of crisis management, especially since they didn't give a date as to how long this need for expansion yeah, we can't rule, we can't rule would, that out. would last. We can't rule that out because uh, people, refined people like uh, Ndejuba, Mwajuba. Mwajuba, that's the Minister of State Education. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I mean, such people, they have brain, they have connection, they must be there. Then Babasha, Lawal, Lawal and... Uh, yeah, they must still persuade them because they were speaking the voice of Muslim, uh, no, of a, of a Christian. And to be inclusive, you don't, you don't just, you know... Uh, dismiss or dismiss so I know they will be persuaded. And if they are not in the campaign council or in the yeah, campaign council, they will be given good place. Like even the current secretary to the government, 
a, Christ, a Christian. His name, I don't think, is there. So all those people will be persuaded. And if they agree, they, they will stay incorporated. And if they don't agree, there are ways of bringing them into the fold when, you know, the ships are down and they have to now nominate people who will, if they win, if the party wins, people who will now form the cabinet and what have you. But is there still room for that accommodation? You know, we had Baba Chair Lawal, I mean, last week, I believe never it was. Say never say <laughs> never. In politics, never it's not over never. until it's over. Never say never. Okay. But you know what I'd like to, to, yeah. to backtrack to? Yesterday you made a statement that I'm, I'm going to bring up. You said, <laughs> when campaigns start, we will separate the men from, from the, the boys. boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we have a ruling party that... We are uncertain as to when the ruling party will launch their own campaign. What does this say about the state of the ruling party that have had all the time in the world and have all the resources in the world as well to prepare for this huge election and they are failing to start? If you look at the paper today, you see Pa Adeboye going to uh, the north. Uh, what's the name of the state now? I learned that's his first time, time of going there for a certain crusade and whatever. All those are strategies, okay? What if through Adeboye, some of these people are persuaded and they fall in line? Now, that weather is getting lit, no. Work is going underground. Okay, like uh, uh, Yahaya Belo, Abi? of uh, Kogi in charge of uh, the youth. It's already bringing the youth together. By the time he starts his uh, 100 million uh, man march, you everywhere will be, will be subsumed by APC. So what is going on, just like that of PDP, the first nominate or the first announced the first list, and later they now added to it as advisors, this advisors, that, okay? So, it, uh, and since it's uh, indefinitely, indefinitely means it could be tomorrow. The, the difference between short run and long run is what it takes mm. for changes to be. But, uh, but yeah. while work is going on, the presidential candidate himself is in London and has been said to be resting. <laughs> what, what do we make of no, these? I don't mind people, you know? Uh, traveling abroad doesn't mean you rest. I could remember that. Uh, Chief Fabiola, he does most of his, you know, uh, networking and whatever when he's in the in the plane. Okay. So, talking less of when he's in hotel. So, I mean, there are sometimes you just want to be. Who knows whether your chairman is somewhere now strategizing on where he's and to to a layman, they may say, oh, he's somewhere sleeping or somewhere. Uh, John Ketari. So, people, once you are at the helm of affairs, every second you think of how your organization, you know, you know, moves forward. And for someone who is already presidential candidate, uh, no moment, no moment, no moment is idle. Well, APC has, first of all, the, a very horrible track record. <laughs> Obviously. Hey, now, track record of what? Um, in what the last area? seven years? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Having hell oh, on yeah, earth? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so. we, we can't wait for them to pack and go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Way too earnestly. We but we've seen yesterday the um, the presidential candidates. Actually, he he spoke about the about the Afeni Ferry leader, you know, basically was not, he didn't approve of the fact that he endorsed Peter Obi. That's the first one. Then this one happens today where we're seeing that they're not ready for the campaigns. And before that, they sidelined the likes of Baba Cherlawal and all those that had been, that had been very vocal about their, them not approving of the Muslim Muslim ticket. This does not necessarily look good. And the timing is horrible or impeccable depending on what perspective you're looking at. So what message does this send to the electorate who might have actually been, you know, still vying for another, you know, a repeat of history of what just happened in the past seven years. I think it's always better to prepare for an exam very well than 
to get to the exam and start jiffing or giraffing to see whether your colleagues have better answer. What they are doing is they want to put everything properly and if it's inclusiveness and representation, they want to do everything before they inaugurate. And once they inaugurate, you know, the work kicks up. That's simple, right? Uh, <laughs> if only it was that easy to, to win an election. But let's look at what has been called, I will use the word crisis, the crisis within the PDP and the crisis within the APC. And let's put these two situations next to the growing movement that is the Labour Party and the obedience. Uh, do, do you still share, do you still have maintained the same sentiment that with cracks in the two major parties, there's no room for an obedient movement to make inroads? I think the parties are really solving their internal problems. For instance, today now, we found that uh, uh, Secundus has been made. Secundus is a force to be reckoned with in Rivers, if not more popular than Wiki. OK? So I know him. I told you our board. He was in Nikon. That is a uh, NICOM is the insurance arm of government. I was in Security and Exchange Commission, and we were inaugurated same day. And ever since, or out of almost 50 of us, that is 6-6 six, six or 7-7 seven, seven per board times 10, okay, under Ministry of Finance, is the highest person in politics so far, because we watch ourselves, you know, watch how we are moving. So it's a fantastic guy. So that is already handling wiki, I won't say uh, rigidity. Then in um, APC, Christian, no, mostly Muslim. People are working, people are working just to see that actually they pacify the Christian. So all this, by the time everything is put together, obedient, yes, it's working. In fact, just as I said yesterday, he has really um, dear other parties all, and they know that they have to get things right. Uh, right. They shouldn't make mistake. If they make mistake, there is a party, you know, there that cool. Waiting you know, in they, the corridors of power. And again, the obedient. In fact, when I discuss with some friends, it's like it's spoiling things for mm. PDP. Because uh, most of the people that they will get from Southeast are people that were already PDP or traditionally PDP. And if they continue have, uh, letting him loose and they don't work hard, okay, it will soften, you know, things for Tinumbu of APC because uh, once you weaken PDP in Southeast and you, from the look of things, you can't become president yet because the structure is not there and the coverage is not there, you will only spoil it for PDP if care is not taken. So, I mean, there are some things that I can't just understand, you know, and what is going, about what is going on. All right, well, that's one way to look at it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure many people would feel that uh, a dent can be made at the ruling party as well, but I think that's another conversation for another day. Mr. Otitoju, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. You'll be back with us so we can pick this up, won't we? No thank, thank you so much for your we, time. See you on Friday. Uh, exactly, all right. <laughs>